Welcome to this Global Television Network special. My name is Pastor David Longobardo, and we have a great program lined up for you. Dr. Bishop Sir Walter Mack has been the senior pastor at Union Baptist Church in Winston-Salem for over 20 years, and he is a prolific author, and we're going to discuss a unique book that he and his mother wrote together. The book is entitled, this will capture your attention, Before You Go to the Hospital. Uh, it, it says, Ideas to Navigate Your Season of Healing. I love that. In light of the fact that we have had over 700,000 people in America die just during the pandemic, how we view going to the hospital and getting through any event is essential and we're going to talk to dr mack about that let me read you two verses of scripture relevant to our talk, uh, topic here's the psalmist listen i called on the lord in distress and the lord answered me and set me in a broad place listen to this now i shall not die the psalmist said but live and declare the works of the Lord. Before you ever go into that hospital, you better claim those two verses of Scripture. Dr. Mack, it is a joy to be with you. Glad to be with you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. You look great. Tell Kim she's doing a good job yes, keeping you dressed yes, well and looking well. Bless you. I want to talk about your mama, Francis. Yes. Your mama is 91 years old. 91 years old. For much of her life, she has been a professional caretaker, a yes. nurse. Yes. And um, uh, you two uh, put this book together before you go to the hospital because she, as well as you, have seen a lot of people come and go. Absolutely. In those hospitals over the year. Absolutely. Talk about what prompted you and her to write this book. Yes, it's interesting because um, I come from a family of, of nurturers. My father was a pastor, the late Dr. Sir Walter Mack Sr. He passed the Emanuel Baptist Church in Winston-Salem. He took care of the spiritual side. Yeah. My mother was a registered nurse um, and a retired nurse now. Um, they graduated from the KDB Nursing School which is a historic school that was designated for um, black nurses at mm -hmm. that time to educate them um, so that they can learn nursing and to take care of the community and, and um, to develop and grow. So she went to that school back in the 40s. Wow. And once she got a nursing degree, um, she went into nursing and later on graduated and worked in nursing um, for well over 30, 40 years. Well, after retiring, um, you know, she worked as a first lady, served as a first lady, and then recently um, she did get sick with a pleural a effusion, which is a lung condition, but also she had a heart condition and a kidney condition. Wow. Um, that landed her in the hospital for 90 days. 90 days. 90 days At total. what age? At 91. At, ni At 91, 91 years old. Yeah. Um, of course, there was times she would go in and come out, but collectively, 90 days, um, she was hospitalized. Okay. During that time we were there, um, she received some tremendous care, but she began to just share wisdom about nursing care and about um, her theology and her understanding of God in the midst of healing. And it was blowing me away. So while she was talking, I began to write notes about what she was saying. Wow. For an example, for an example, um, during one of her stays, the doctor came in and he did not have a really optimistic um, perspective about her condition. Not a good bedside manner. <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> and he says to her, he says, Ms. Mack, he says, um, would you like for me to do you want to live or do you want me to make you just comfortable? And she says, Ooh. excuse me, he says, do you want to live or I can just make this comfortable for you? 
He's just looking at her age and just it, all of that. He don't know her. Right. <laughs> you know, they can always say, you know, yep. well, she's yep. 91. Yeah, and, exactly. But he says, do you want to live or I can just make this comfortable and easy for yeah. you? We can make this easy for you. And she says, what do you mean? I want to live. And so out of that, he says, OK, well, since you want to live, we're going to start an aggressive plan for you so that you can live, which says to me, that there was an option there. Exactly. Okay? Had she said anything other than that, the outcome could have been very different. You'd have been doing a homecoming service. The probably. homecoming yeah. service. Uh, that's, that's right. When she said, I want to live, one of the things that she instructed to our family is this. Before you go to the hospital, you need to be determined to live. Amen. That, that you cannot allow the hospital spirit to dictate if you will <laughs> the spirit of infirmity to 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 overtake you yep. um before you go to the yep. hospital she was determined that she wanted to live and that's what she said i want to live that when we think about god god has commissioned us to live he said i come that you might have life and have it more, more abundantly. abundantly in this world um sicknesses may happen we may have ailments and things may take place, but we got to speak life over us and decree that we shall live. And that's what she did. So in the book, she talks about why it is important that daily you speak life over you and you speak life into you in spite of the option of either being made to feel comfortable or live you got to be determined that you want to live. I want to say something before he continues. Isn't this good? Now listen <laughs> to me. Listen to me. This book did not exist before she went in that hospital. That's right. The knowledge, the wisdom, uh, the experience factors as a nurse were all in here, but this book didn't exist. Now I want you to understand this. Is she sitting back just letting circumstances dictate to her? Not at all. She tells this doctor, I want to live. And while she's in the hospital, Jesus. she's dictating <laughs> principles to her son. And they're writing a book while she's in the hospital <laughs> on what some people might consider a deathbed. Yes, sir, Not it. for her. That's it's it. a life bed. Yes. And let's make the best out of this. That's let's it. make this Work out for God's good and glory. That's it. That's Continue, it. That's Dr. Max. That's 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 this is good. Well, and, and you know, and here's a piece. Here's a piece. And what many people don't know is that they gave her 38 hours to live. Mm. They gave us, they called us in, and they showed us a graph. Okay? And the graph says, the doctor says, every time I open up my computer, this graph comes up, and it's a graph that says we're in a danger zone. Ooh. And the doctor, I think about it now and I just tip. And the doctor says that your mother has 38 hours to live. Also, every indicator that this professional doctor is getting medically says she only has but a handful of hours left. Continue. A handful of hours. And my family, my brothers and, and my brother, and my sisters, um, we respect doctors. Yes. Um, we have doctors in our family. We have nurses in our family, pharmacists. We respect sure. the science. We respect that. And so when we met with them, one of the things that I said to the doctor, and I said, we respect what you're saying. However, we know that you are a physician and not a mortician. Yes. Yes. And we know that our mother decreed that she wanted to live. And so what we want to know now is what is the life plan? Yeah. yeah. And, and thanks be to God that that doctor was a believer. He was. And, and that doctor she tapped into her faith and our faith. And when I tell you that team went to work and they prayed, we prayed, Ooh. and God shifted and, and from that, we put in the book, and my mother has this principle that there are three opinions. 
When three go, opinions. Before you go to the hospital, there get are three opinions. Get a pen opinions. out. Yeah, that's it. Write these down. Three opinions. Go three ahead, Three opinions. There is the doctor's opinion. Yep. Okay? The medical opinion. Yep. And there are times when you have to respect that. Yeah. Because they do research, all that kind of stuff. You have to respect the medical opinion. Then there's your opinion. Yeah. You have a right to have an opinion about your body. Yeah. You know your body. Exactly. Okay? I know sometimes when I get up, I, when I work out and I say, hey, my body don't feel like this today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I back off yeah. that, okay? Yeah. I have an opinion about my yeah. body. There's the medical opinion, there's my opinion, and then there's God's, God's opinion. God's opinion. That's exactly All right? right. And God's opinion overrides my opinion That's and it. the doctor's opinion. Amen. We're having church now. <laughs> We're having church. Go and, ahead. And, that's, and so... All she kept saying whenever they gave her a diagnosis, regardless of the visit, is that her words were, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Ooh. She tapped into his opinion. God's opinion of this, God's not through with me yet. Yeah. And that was her testimony. When they asked her, Miss Mack, what do you think about this? What do you think? She says, be patient with me. God is not through with God me God is yet. not through with me. And that's what we held on to. That's what we kept re re repeating with them. When they wanted to do other things, we said, she said, God was not through with her yet. And she kept dictating to you <laughs> and, write, and you kept writing principles. That's it. That's right. Writing principles. So there were things that um, we put in the book for people to do before they go to the hospital. For an example, uh, my mother instructed us to bring a picture of herself and put it in the room. And so we took the nursing picture that she had and her put it in the room. Professional picture. Professional yep. picture. Her belief about that is people need to see you before you were sick Ooh. so that they'll know what to work you back to. Gotcha. They gotcha. need to see you healthy. And can I tell you, um, every medical provider that came in that room took 10 minutes talking about the picture. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. She knew who she was. That's right. And she knew what she looked like. <laughs> what she was doing is giving a vision to everybody else that's who right. came in that that's, room. That's every right. doctor, every nurse, that's this right. is who I am. That's who I am. I'm walking out of here. That, that's, like that. that's exactly right. Go that's exactly right. Ooh, that's and good. She wanted them to see her, her healthy Absolutely. and well. And they took so much time looking at those pictures of her family they caught it. and those kind of things together. Um, one of the other things that she suggests in the book is that people get on my chart or yeah. the, the chart where you can upload information because we were able to monitor the, the reports right. of the physicians. We were able to keep up with the test results. Yep. Uh, we were able to monitor what was happening to her real time. So if there was a procedure going on in 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 the in, in the um, you can see cause and effect. You we can see yeah. all, yep. all of that. Yeah. So all of those things are very important to do before you go to the hospital. Yep. In January, catch this mm -hmm. now. Photograph. Yes. My chart. My chart go is ahead. very important. The other thing is now this is God. This is nothing but God. So in January this is the time frame. Um, she has us as a family to pull all of our information together. Mm -hmm. And she just says it just casually. Everybody needs to have their vital information together. Y'all make sure you got your vital information so if anything ever happens, everybody know where to go. Good to go. Yep. Right? That's in January. Yep. In February, she's ill. In, yep. We all knew exactly where to go to get her vital records. She had prepared She'd already put it together. Yep. So in the book, in the back of the book, she puts a format in place for vital records, for families, so that if something happens, you don't have to yep. search for Medicare numbers. Prepared. For, for birth certificate numbers or whatnot. It's already in the back of the book. So if people get a book, they need to get their own book so that they can record their own Information, information and they would have it 
all ready so that if anything happens, it's right there, you know. My guest is Dr. Sir Walter Mack. Um, this is great stuff. He's <laughs> telling us about the account of his mother being hospitalized for 90 days, a 91-year-old, wonderful young lady. And the book is entitled, Before You Go to the Hospital. We're going to take just a moment break, but I want you to get a pen and piece of paper because at the end of this broadcast, we're going to let you know about a website where you can secure this book for you and your family. But for right now, Pastor David Crabtree, a dear friend of Global Television Network, has this special message for you. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey, friends. I'm David Crabtree, lead pastor at Calvary Church, and what a privilege it is to be talking with you today through the auspices of Global Television Network. If you're like me, you want to see the gospel available to people all over the world, and technology today has made it possible for us to literally shake nations. I love the work that Global Television Network is doing, and we need your help and support. You can help us by giving. You can help us by praying with us. Remember, we are Global Television Network, and we're located at 300 North Carolina Highway 68 South. You can write us there, here in Greensboro, North Carolina, 27409. Or you can text us at 336-575-6577 or on the web, www.gtvnetwork.us, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're here for you. It's been a pleasure just to meet with you for a minute today. Remember, Global Television Network. Thank you, David. Your prayers and your support give us the ability to have men just like this come your way. Dr. Sir Walter Mack is telling us about the hospitalization of his mother, a professional nurse by background, um, and uh, what came out of that is this book, Before You Go to the Hospital. I want you to continue the story. We're in the hospital. Uh, she's put a p beautiful picture of herself in that room. Yes. Uh, she's up to date with my chart and keeping the family up yes. to date. And uh, she has informed the family even before she went in that all of you should have your medical uh, records together and yes. ready in case of any emergencies. Yes. Continue. So, and so this. So what is very important and what we discovered through all of this is advocacy. It is so important that people have an advocate in the hospital. Nurses and doctors. That's where the family comes that's in. That's where the family yep. comes in. And also church ministries. Yes, yeah. Um, what doctors and nurses and, and, and CNAs, they're very busy, um, particularly now with COVID the impact of COVID, yep. they're overwhelmed, they're working, they're moving. And, and so it becomes incumbent upon families, friends, church members yes. to be there. Um, one of the things that I think made the difference in my mother's care is that we were there around the clock. Yeah. We were there around the clock. Yeah. My, my brother, my sisters, uh, my god sister. We were there around the clock and we were able to catch errors. We were able to remind them of what should be taking place. We were there to say, no, this is not going to happen or this would happen. For an example, one night, <clears throat> uh, 91 years old, um, my mother goes off to sleep at nine o'clock. At 12 o'clock, um, one of the CNA workers come in to relocate her room by accident, okay? Well, we knew that that was not supposed to be yep. happening, but we were able to say, no, that shouldn't be happening at 12 o'clock midnight. And then two, we were not notified of that. I have a question okay. for you that's just hitting me. During this pandemic in the hospitals, there have been huge restrictions on loved ones being able to have yes. access to their loved ones who are in the hospital. How were you able to gain that access and can you gain it in the environment we're in right yes. now? Well, the, the one thing that we had on our side is that my mother did not have COVID. Yeah. She had a plural effusion. So she didn't have that restriction. She didn't have, okay. have that yeah. restriction. Yeah. 
but the other thing is, if a person does have COVID and um, there are restrictions, um, family members must respect those restrictions, but they are also now making it such that clergy can go in. Um, so then now it's easy. Uh, I would recommend for families to have a relationship with clergy. Yeah. Um, to maybe yeah. check in on families. Also have a relationship with the people who work at those front desks. So good. Because you can always call. And keep up with and my keep chart. Up with, that's, and keep up with my there chart. There you go. That's it. Okay. You can see what's going on there. Because it's very important that uh, we understand the hospital is a place of healing. And those people do. A few minutes heal. left. We got to get mama out of the hospital. Yes. Tell us what happened. So what happened is, man, we were praying and and um, working with the doctors, they never gave up. Um, once they saw her numbers coming back around, um, they were determined at that point that wait a minute, God is up to something. Yep. Um, because it, at one point hope. they did. Yep. At one point they did say, you know, there's yep. nothing else we could do. But when they saw those numbers turn around, um, they got working and they began to put a plan together. So what we discovered is that nutrition is very important. Mm. And so there was a plan for her nutrition um, with a feeding, um, you know, getting nutrition in yep. her. Her organs began to develop and yep. get stronger. Yep. Um, that helped the heart condition, that helped the lung condition, that helped the kidney condition. But we know what it really was. And at the end, every doctor, Every nurse that came in that room said that we cannot give this credit to anybody but God. Even her doctor that was on uh, the rotation said to her before her, her discharge, Miss Mack, when you go back to church, I want to come go to church wow. with you. Because wow. I know that only God could turn this around. From 38 hours to you now going home 45 days later, only God could do this. <laughs> Thank God for skilled physicians and nurses. Thank God for great medications. But listen to me. Thank God that faith as a foundation is the key for every believer. Yes. And, and when we put our trust in the Lord, listen, <laughs> our future isn't dictated to by a physician is dictated to by the great physician. Yes, yes. Dr. Mack, <laughs> we only have a few more minutes left. If, if I'm watching this, I said, write that down, write that. We're going to get that book before you go to the hospital. Yes. Um, leave us with a, a few final nuggets that has meant so much to you and your family as you've watched now mama recovering from all of this. So the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. She reaches out and touches the hem, the H-E-M. Yes. And I've often wondered why she didn't touch the hem, the H-I-M. Yeah, yeah. If I've gotten that close to Jesus, I would have touched the H-I-M. Yeah. She touches the H-E-M. And the reason that she touches the H-E-M and not the H-I-M is because she knew they were always ready out to kill Jesus. So instead of having blame put on him for a bleeding woman touching him, oh my. she looks out for Jesus and he turns around and looks so out good. for her. So and I want to leave somebody with this. When you look out for Jesus, he will always look out for you. That's so good. And my mother has spent her life looking out for him. And we saw him look out for her. You look out for Jesus when you worship him, when you support ministries like this, when you support your church ministry, when you pray for others, you look out for him. When you look out for him, he will always look out for you. If you want a copy of this book, please tell us about the website. You can go to SirWalterMack.com and get this book. And I pray that it's a blessing to your life and that it will be a blessing to your healing process. In days to come we have two minutes left yes pray a prayer of salvation and healing 
as we close this broadcast. Go ahead, Dr. Matt. For those of you watching and that if you want a relationship with Christ, I want you to know that he's available for you, that if you accept him in your life as your savior, he will be your Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for those who are listening and those who need a relationship with you. Now, God, we confess our sins before thee, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy that establishes your purpose in our life. And God, I thank you that you're saving someone right now that you're healing someone right now, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us, that we could have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you now, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeem of the Lord together say amen. God bless Dr. You. Mack and his family know this, our savior, is a savior. Our savior is a baptizer. Yes. Our savior is a healer. Yes. Their family is experiencing that. Your family can experience that. Yes. We're bringing up the website information where you can secure this book for yes. you and your family. Get copies not only for yourself, yes. but others you care about. This holiday season, give them away as a gift yes. because you never know when you're going to need information just like this. Yes. Dr. Mack, thank you. It's always thank a blessing you, to friend. be with you. All yes. God's best to mama, yes. to your family, yes. to union. Yes. Uh, I believe 2021 is going to be a great year hey, for you. you got to come back and preach for I'm, us, man. I'm going to do that. Right. I'm going to do that. Thank you for joining us on Global Television Network. Again, your prayers and your support are the reason we're able to bring great guests and great information your way. Thank you so much for your partnership. If you haven't sent in your gift this month, tuck it in. We're going to bring up our information where you can... Send us a check or you can go onto the website and give us a secure gift. But thank you for being a part of Global Television Network. Until we come your way again, you know this. God loves you. So do we. God bless you.